Good morning, yeah. everyone. Okay. So it's so nice go. to see you all here today and how much we need each other in these times. Uh, contrary to what you might have been led to believe by the order of service, I'm not Reverend Linda Simmons. Uh, my name is Val Hall and I'm a member of the lay led service committee. And we run the service once a month to give Rev Linda uh, a little time off from the pulpit. pulpit. Uh, she and Gary are away this weekend. Um, today will be a little different for our folks on Zoom. Um, we have no, since Gary isn't here, we have no one to do the tech work uh, for the Zoom uh, hybrid service. So instead, you can hear and see us, and you can hear and see each other, of course, but we can't hear or see you. However, we know you're there and we're very happy to have you here with us today. So a big welcome to you on Zoom. Um, Kat Robinson will be your Zoom usher, and I know she will be taking very good care of you. So thank you, Kat. This morning, I'd like to read the mission. These are not only the words that we voted on a while ago, but those we try to live by every day. Working toward a more just and inclusive society, our congregation supports spiritual growth and service with open doors, minds, and hearts open doors for welcoming our diverse island communities and visitors, open minds for exploring different ideas and beliefs, and open hearts for deepening our connection with each other and ourselves. It's my special privilege today to welcome our speaker, Kamal McCarthy, to the pulpit. Kamal is the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Director for the town of Nantucket. He's been there in that post for six months, and I believe it's you're the very first person in that position. Uh, Kamal moved to Nantucket in 2000 and graduated from Nantucket High School in 2005. Though I didn't have an opportunity to be his teacher, uh, he was in the graduating class right between my two kids, so he got to be friends with both of them. Um, Kamal graduated from Bates College in 2009 with a bachelor's degree in political science and earned a master's in labor studies from UMass Amherst. Uh, he's currently a doctoral candidate at Northeastern University's College of Professional Studies, working towards an EdD in organizational leadership studies. Prior to working for the town, Kamal was the associate director at the Museum of African American History in Boston, uh, which owns and operates our own historic uh, African meeting house and the Seneca Boston Florence Higginbotham House. He also worked at the Nantucket Athenaeum and the Community Preservation Committee. Kamal is currently on the board of the Nantucket Arts Council a member of the Community Foundation for Nantucket's Advisory Committee and serves on the board of the Nantucket Community Music Center. So welcome, Kamal. Please join Allison Forrestrom and me as in saying the words in your order of service while she lights the chalice. With this flame, we renew our commitment to justice, peace, and compassion. And now it's time to sing our affirmation. This is also printed in your order of service, and I invite you to stand uh, as you are able and sing along. It's the time in our service where we greet one another. Before we do, we ask if you are new today or ret returning from a long hiatus, 
please feel free, if you wish, and only if you wish, to come up to our mic so that we can all hear you. Is there anyone who would like to do that? Okay, well, please now greet one another from your seats or unmute yourselves on Zoom and give everyone a hearty you, you, hello. So, oh, everybody, oh, you can, hi. hi, Leah. I feel hi, like I've seen Leah. you so much recently. Hi, Paul. <laughs> hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Hello. Everybody. Good morning, Carol. Good morning, everybody. Hey, great. Good doing? morning, Carol. Hi, everybody. Hello, um, Bo. Hi, Bo. Hi, Leah. Oh, Hi, Amy. Oh. Hi, Amy. I think we're going back hey. to the best, everybody. Oh, okay. okay. We're going to the first hem. So please, uh, Craig. Today so. is Hi, everybody. 299. Make channels for the streams of love. This was recorded this week by the Unitarian Virtual Meeting House Choir. And again, I invite you to stand and sing. Embracing Diversity by Ginger Betzer. Equality, a mathematical term. With emotions added, a code for don't be paranoid. None of us are equal, nor have equal opportunity. Tell an autistic child he can be anything he wants to be and watch him stem away the ridiculousness. Poverty, race, culture, IQ. Gender create our humanity, our destinies. <clears throat> Prejudice exists. I can only hope that each of us embrace what is special and good about who we are and find our place in healing the world, being blessed by each other's diversities. Thank you, Laura. Please join me now for a time of meditation and reflection. This meditation will be in the form of a responsive reading. After I read each statement, you should respond with, it will not matter. If you want to follow along, the meditation is number 576 in the back of your gray hymnal. I'll start with a little introduction before I start the statements. If, recognizing the interdependence of all life, we strive to build community, the strength we gather will be our salvation. If you are black and I am white, if you are female and I am male, if you are older and I am younger, if you are progressive and I am conservative, if you are straight and I am gay, if you are Christian and I am Jewish, if we join spirits as brothers and sisters, the pain of our aloneness will be lessened and that does matter. 
In this spirit, we build community and move towards restoration. Now it's the time in our service for joys and concerns. We call this part of our theology since our seventh principle is the interconnected web of all existence of which we are a part. Knowing that our joys and sorrows connect us all, we leave this time in our beloved community to share with each other. If you're here in person, you please come up to the mic so we can all hear you. If you don't feel comfortable doing so, just raise your hand and Paul will bring you a pad of paper to write on. Then it can be brought to me to read. You don't have to put your name on it. If you are on Zoom, you can let Kat know if you have a joy or concern to share with the group. Good morning, congregation. Well, you guys are really loud. I was hoping to say that again and you'll be even louder and I'd be like, I've always wanted to do that. Um, so I'm gonna do it anyways. Good morning, congregation. All right, <laughs> there we go. Thank you for having me speak today. I really appreciate this opportunity. My name is Kamal McCarthy and I'm the DEI director for the town of Nantucket. So when Reverend Simmons approached me to give a talk back in late spring, I think it was, I wanted to come up with an original presentation for the members of the Unitarian Church. Admittedly, I was under the impression that the service would be entirely virtual and I would fill the majority of our time together. So I created an elaborate PowerPoint presentation on the basic principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And the goal of the original presentation was to demonstrate that diversity, equity, and inclusion have specific purposes. After previewing the presentation for my coworkers, I emailed Linda and I told her that I was ready for our talk in September, which, and it was going to be an hour long, by the way. Linda graciously replied, I am so happy that you're still willing to do this but you have 20 minutes. <laughs> so I was a little surprised by the time limit, but no big deal, I thought to myself, I'll just cut this one hour presentation to 20 minutes and I'll just focus on one principle for each terminology. So I shortened the presentation, which included charts and visuals flying up on the screen and everything, of course. And so I felt really prepared and my mind started to wonder what was I going to wear for my virtual debut as DEI director? However, four days ago, I received some information from my lay leader, Val, and former teacher, not actual student, just in the context of being a high school teacher, of course, as she said earlier, that almost flatlined me being here any at all. I was informed that I was going to be presented in person. Now, I've become accustomed to my Zoom box inside in this position. And quite honestly, gathering in person never even crossed my mind. <laughs> like, it didn't. Um, and then Val told me some more interesting information that the tech guy she just told us would not be here. <laughs> and so I thought to myself, how can you give a presentation without the tech guy? This is really all just gonna fall apart. I wasn't prepared to speak on stage at a podium. I've never given a talk about my, pre about my new position without PowerPoint. And I don't know if you can tell, but I really don't like public speaking. Um, well, thankfully, Val gave me some advice and words of encouragement. She said something along the lines of, just tell us what diversity, equity, and inclusion means. Tell us what a DEI director does, and then just take your talk in whatever direction you want. So that is exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm going to briefly share some definitions and responsibilities for this position, and then I'm going to focus the rest of my talk on equity specifically. So first, definitions. Diversity means any dimension that can be used to differentiate groups and people from one another. It means respect for and appreciation of our differences. On the other hand, equity means consistent and systematic, fair, just, and impartial treatment of all individuals, including individuals who belong to underserved communities that have been denied such treatment. And inclusion means a state of being valued, respected, and supported. It is about focusing on the needs of every individual and ensuring the right conditions are in place for each person to achieve his or her full potential or they. It is important to note that these definitions were provided by the Department of Housing and Urban Development and recent executive orders by the current White House administration. A more simplified way to think of DEI 
is that diversity is where everybody is invited to the party. Equity means that everyone gets to contribute to the playlist and inclusion means that everyone has the opportunity to dance. As part of the responsibilities for this position, this DEI post is one of the few that focuses on promoting DEI internally, such as conducting professional development training for town employees, as well as externally, such as serving as the town's liaison for community events. As a DEI director, I'm responsible for collaborating with Nantucket's Department of Culture and Tourism on cultural events. I'm responsible for advocating for minorities, people with disabilities, for the LGBTQ plus community, and for other marginalized groups. And I'm also responsible for developing metrics that measure DEI's effectiveness. Now I'm going to use the remainder of my talk and our time together to specifically talk about equity. I think a lot of us have heard the term equity used a lot lately. I decided to talk about equity almost by divine intervention, by the way. Val had brought me a draft copy of the handout for today's service, and I noticed that the title said diversity and inclusion. So I thought to myself, aha, given that I'm the diversity, equity, and inclusion director, this is an opportunity for me to specifically talk about what today's title is missing, equity. The one thing I would like us all to know about equity in the context of diversity, equity, and inclusion is that there are multiple types of equity, and I'm going to explain a few in greater details. The first, there is social equity. In public administration, i.e. town government, social equity refers to the policy formation and implementation, public management practices, the provisions of goods and services, the administrator resident relationships and interactions that reduces and ultimately eliminates disparity, marginalization, and discrimination. So an example of social equity could be to continue broadcasting or select board meetings on Zoom and enabling Zoom's translation function to provide subtitles in Spanish for members of our community that speak that language. This way, the Spanish speaking members of our community will have better understanding of the issues being discussed in real time at our select board meetings. Second, there is racial equity. Racial equity focuses on the social constructions of race and how it has been used historically and presently to unjustly, discriminate, this, to unjustly distribute sorry, opportunities and resources based on a person's skin color, heritage, ethnicity, and or national origin. An example of striving to reduce racial inequity could be an organizational commitment to having a board of trustees that reflects the community it serves. Then there's also employment equity. Employment equity is a term I came across that seems to be more popularly used in Canada and South Africa. It specifically is about using hiring policies that encourage for fair representation of members of minority groups, women, and other people who have suffered discrimination. The American equivalent terminology for employment equity is probably equal employment opportunity. An example of trying to achieve equal um, employment equity, sorry, is the re-examination of um, job, job requirements. There are many positions in the United States that ask for a college degree, and for someone working on his doctorate, you won't believe I'm gonna say this. Um, <laughs> there are many positions in the United States that ask for a, a, a college degree, but not all positions actually require such qualifications. And as the knowledge economy continues to proliferate, there are some major technology companies that are starting to reevaluate their requirements to increase hiring and diversifying their talent pools by not requiring college degrees for the work that don't actually require it. Now, the last form of equity I will review with us all today is representation equity. Representation equity is the recognition and contextualization of past accomplishments, contributions, and plights of underrepresented groups. It also involves the direct participation of marginalized people in the exhibition of their own history and culture. So we reach representation equity when we are willing to listen, accept, and value the untold and undertold stories of individuals outside of our personal characteristics. An example of representation equity is the towns and, country, and the country's recent acknowledgement of Juneteenth and Indigenous Peoples Day. So let's recap. 
Today, I have shared with us four different types of equities and their significances. We have reviewed social equity, racial equity, employment equity, and representation equity. Now, it is important to note that there are other types of equity and each have specific purposes as well. For example, there is equity in finance, which we're probably all familiar with. Actually, I didn't take an econ course, I probably shouldn't say that. Uh, <laughs> there is gender equity, health equity, housing equity, and there's also equity in even sports and recreation. I wanted to share a talk on equity because I hope that those of us in this space will have a shared experience now and have a deeper understanding of what equity actually means within the context of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and also in trying to practice in equity in our daily lives. So based on our talk today, the next time someone tells you that they are an equity officer, one of your first thoughts or questions should be, what type of equity is your specialty? Ladies, gentlemen, they, and those undecided, thank you for having me. Val made me promise to take two or three questions. But if there are none, I'm okay with that too. <laughs> That's a great question. What is <laughs> so the question is, what is my equity specialty? As DEI director, I focus primarily on social equity, but honestly, all four equities that I've just reviewed are a part of my responsibilities. <laughs> Thanks again for having me. Thank you, thank you so much, Kamal. Well, I'm gonna have to get on my tiptoes now um, for uh, enlightening us. I, I had no idea there were all those different kinds of equities. I didn't really understand what equity was, so that was a wonderful uh, education for me. Um, now, now is the time for our offering. And as always, we ask you to be generous. To keep this interconnected web uh, live takes all of us giving our time, our energy, our thoughts, and our spirits. But it also takes resources. This is your time to contribute to keep all that the UU Meeting House means to us. You all have cards in your hymnals for contact tracing, which you should fill out uh, the, the outside, and you can put your offering within it. If this is a pledge payment uh, rather than an offering, you can just uh, write pledge on your envelope. You may be pledging you know, monthly or yearly or whatever. Um, you can also give on your website by clicking on contribute. There's also a Tithely app that you can sign up for and do your pledge that way. Or you can scan the QR code on the outside of your envelope. But if you need more help, which I certainly would if I had all those choices, which I don't understand at all, um, let us know. And thank you for your generosity.
our final hymn this morning is number 1053, How Could Anyone Ever Tell You? service with the words of Motse, a fourth century Chinese philosopher. When all the people of the world love, then the strong will not overpower the weak. The many will not oppress the few. The wealthy will not mock the, pure, the poor. The honored will not disdain the humble, and the cunning will not deceive the simple. Now please John, uh, join, <laughs> join John Merson, that's a tongue twister, and me with the words in your order of service as he extinguishes the chalice. Same peace and love until we meet again. Wonderful music as usual, especially my favorite Rafi tune uh, in the offertory. Uh, my kids grew up with Rafi. I'm sure some of yours did too. Um, and thank you everyone, both here in the sanctuary and on Zoom for joining us today. Um, if you're here in the sanctuary, please remember to leave your contact tracing uh, cards in your hymnals. 
and leave the hymnals in the pews and the pencils too. Um, you can leave through the side ramp door or the back doors, whichever is easier for you. Um, there won't be a coffee, unfortunately. It was looking pretty awful uh, for quite a while this morning and it's still pretty wet out. But next weekend we have the blessing of the animals and it's outside and we would love to have some contributions for refreshments, both liquid and solid. Uh, so that's an opportunity. Um, and thank you again for being here.